Welcome to the 510 Podcast. I'm Heidi Matheson, and my goal in the next 5 to 10 minutes is to bring you some encouragement from the Word of God, and to do what Paul tells us to do in Ephesians 5 verse 10, to find out what pleases the Lord. Together, let's strengthen our faith through the Word of God. If you've listened to the past few episodes, you'll know that we're looking at the I am statements made by Jesus in the Gospel of John. So far, we've seen Jesus make the simple statement, I am, claiming to be Yahweh God. We've also seen him call himself the bread of life and the light of the world. And today we're going to look at what he says in John chapter 10, where he says, I am the door or the gate of the sheep. And he calls himself the good shepherd. Before we look at the scriptures, we need to understand the word pictures that Jesus was using in John 10 would have been very relevant to his listeners. For most of us who live in towns and cities and have very little to do with livestock, we may not fully understand the significance of what Jesus is saying. But in Jesus' day, shepherds and sheep would have been common sights. His listeners would have been very familiar with the role of a shepherd and with the job of sheep herding and caring for the flocks in the fields around the towns, particularly around Bethlehem, where they would have reared and cared for the lambs that would have been used for sacrifices in the temple. This was a hugely important job because these lambs had to be without spot or blemish. So the shepherds had to take great care to make sure these sheep were not attacked by wild animals or to make sure they didn't fall or get hurt in a way that could mark them or create a blemish. So let's read Jesus' words from John chapter 10. Now I'm just going to read a selection of a few verses, but I want to encourage you to go and read the whole chapter. It really is a beautiful picture of who Jesus is to us. So John chapter 10 verses 1 to 4. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. The sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Then verses 7 to 9. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. And then verses 14 and 15. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. So the first thing Jesus said is that he is the door to the sheepfold. Now if you think of the word sheepfold or sheep pen, What comes to your mind might be quite different to what a sheepfold was in Bible times. Stone was the most common building material in Israel at the time, and the sheepfolds would have been created with low stone walls and one gate or opening, which acted as a door. In some cases, the sheep would have been kept in a cave with only one entrance. The sheep would be allowed to roam on open land to graze all day, but at sundown, the shepherd would lead them back to the fold and he would spend the night in the gateway, effectively acting as the gate to keep the sheep safe. When Jesus said he was the door to the sheep, he was saying that he is the protector and the keeper of the sheep. He keeps a close eye on them through the day and he guards them at night. The sheep are safe in his care. And then he said, I am the good shepherd. And he goes on to describe how the sheep know who their shepherd is. They recognize his voice. They follow only their shepherd. Now in these ancient sheepfolds, sometimes more than one herd of sheep was kept within the pen. And in the morning, individual shepherds would call out to their sheep to lead them out of the enclosure. The sheep wouldn't follow the voice of a strange shepherd 
each shepherd's sheep would hear, recognize, and obey their own shepherd's voice. And Jesus talks about the sacrifice that the good shepherd makes for his sheep. A shepherd who's simply hired to look after the sheep may run at the first sign of danger. He may not be willing to risk his own safety in the face of an attacking wolf, for example. But the owner of the sheep, the real shepherd, is willing to lay down his life to protect his sheep. This is what Jesus does for us. When we make the decision to become a part of his sheepfold, he protects us. He watches over us. He guides us to safe pastures, refreshing springs, away from the dangers of the enemy. And he ultimately gave his life for each of us. Now the Bible is full of this sheep-shepherd imagery in both the Old and the New Testaments. There's a lovely prophecy in the book of Micah that describes the coming Messiah as a shepherd who comes to set the sheep free. In Luke chapter 15, Jesus tells a parable about a lost sheep and how the shepherd would go in search of the sheep until he finds it and then rejoices when it was found. So when Jesus says he is the good shepherd, he's referencing all these scriptures. His listeners would have really understood the word picture that he was making. He's reminding us that he is the promised Messiah. He's reminding us that he seeks us out to bring us into his sheepfold. And he rejoices when we follow him. And then, of course, there's the famous Psalm 23 written by King David, who was a shepherd himself. In this psalm, David describes the way that the Lord loves his people. David describes the goodness that the Lord shows his people, the protection that he gives them from enemies. David talks about the joy of living in the house of the Lord within the sheepfold of the Good Shepherd. So friends, as we close this episode, I'm going to read Psalm 23. And I encourage you to consider Jesus as your shepherd. I encourage you to make the decision, if you haven't already, to become a part of his sheepfold, of his family. He is good and he laid down his life for you. He will guide you and he will protect you. He will provide for you and he will watch over you. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thanks for listening to the 510 Podcast. I really hope you were encouraged today. I'd love it if you would take a moment to rate the 510 Podcast on your favorite podcast player. And if you found this episode helpful, please consider sharing it with a friend.